welcome back to the Great Shrimp Shoal. Today we're going to be revisiting the 30 gallon tank and the newly added Snowball Cherry Shrimp. I think there are some fun things in store for this group of sprightly little invertebrates. Please remember to take some time to subscribe and turn on notifications because after all, these shrimp don't feed themselves. I do that. When we last left the 30 gallon tank, this is what one of the bamboo shrimp was doing. And he stayed doing that for quite a long time. He's basically pulling nutrients out of the return off the sponge filter. And it seems as though he's doing it pretty efficiently. It's kind of interesting to see the different ways in which the two shrimp species use the sponge filter, because you would never see one of these cherry shrimp doing what the bamboo shrimp did. But every so often I do see the bamboo shrimp looking for food crumbs on the surface of the substrate or the sponge filters, so they are equal opportunity eaters. During the night, some of the snowball shrimp which had been carrying eggs had lost them, so that must mean that they had given birth, and there should be some small cherry shrimp to look for around the tank. Here's one now. As with the babies from the 10 gallon forest tank, these are less than half the size of a grain of rice, so they are very difficult to spot at first, and I don't know whether or not this one has been hatched for a couple of days or for just a few hours, it's hard to tell. Now these Neocaridina shrimp do seem to be fairly carefree eaters, especially when there are no predators in the tank. So you'll see them catching a ride on one of the bamboo shrimp or the snails, or even larger shrimp. The baby shrimp though, tend to keep to themselves and stuff themselves down into the substrate, onto plants, and when larger shrimp come near, they tend to scurry away. So there's definitely some instincts to protect themselves from what would be or could be predators. But after all, when you're about the size of the mouth of everything else in the tank, there's no reason why you shouldn't be just a little bit cautious. It takes a little while to spot these little guys against the background of the substrate especially with their larger family members nearby. Even then, they can choose to stay on other portions of the tanks, backgrounds, plants, and things that are obscured from the front of the tank where I have a perfect view. So getting a head count as to how many shrimp hatched from an adult into their baby state can be difficult. Essentially, I have no idea if there are many more of these little guys around or if this is the sole survivor from his family. You can kind of see here really quickly that what I thought were planaria, and I'll get to that in just a moment, are about the same size as my baby shrimp. So at first it was easy to see how I could be a little bit concerned that they might be a threat to the population of newly hatched baby shrimp. However, these small flatworms are actually Rhabdicola, and they don't seem to be a threat to the shrimp colony at all. They feed on algae and can incorporate it into their bodies, so it looks at least for the time being that they are of no concern. I did not know that at the time though, so it's no wonder that I actually had a planaria trap baited in the tank on certain days when I was filming. And it's also no wonder that I didn't seem to catch a single one of what I thought were planaria because I baited the trap with something a little bit more meaty than algae. I actually used raw meat at some point, and I let it sit for a couple days and get nice and stinky, hoping that it would attract every single flatworm in the tank. And you can imagine my displeasure in seeing not a single pest got attracted into the planaria trap. 
So by now I had seen about one or two of these individual baby shrimp. And the reasoning behind that assumption is that I could move from one side of the tank and see one, and there was another on the other side of the tank. So they couldn't be the same shrimp in two different spots at two different times. But that still leaves a large number of supposed baby shrimp completely unaccounted for because the adults tend to carry in between 15 and 20 fully fertilized eggs. You can see the turbidity in the water inside the planaria trap at the bottom. Something that is decomposing is turning that water cloudy. And I can tell you that when I took it out to clean it, it smelled horrid. So it probably should have attracted if there were any pests in the tank to begin with. That clump of Rotala rotundifolia in the back, which has a ton of stalks, is where I've seen most of the egg-bearing adults and where I've spotted the baby shrimp a couple of times. When this hygrophilia polysperma isn't growing out of control, it's really quite beautiful too. And the java moss is growing very quickly. I've had to trim it a couple of times, and I love the way that it attaches itself to the rock every now and then. At night is when I've had the easiest time spotting these baby shrimp, and I think that has a lot to do with the fact that they feel safer coming out into the darkness than they do under the full glaring light of the grow light. It's super interesting because you can actually see this baby shrimp stop and pause on this single grain from the substrate and take his time trying to find the best bits of food to pick off and feed himself. But when his larger adults from the family pass by these same granules, they tend to hit those with one sweep of their claw and then move on. It just goes to show you that having a collection of juveniles and adults probably is the best way to keep your tank clean because the adults might pass up some food that the babies would just love. This is a really great shot. You have the female carrying eggs on the right, you have a baby there on the left, and in the center you have what appears to be a male, all of them searching for food underneath the hygrophilia polysperma in the tank. It's really easy to get distracted by the fact that you see so many eggs on the adults and then not see those numbers pop up in results seeing babies covering the substrate. But instead, just this one survivor seems to be puttering around most of the time. I'll have to check the water hardness once again because that could be a reason that this one survived while all the others didn't. All right, I'm gonna pause it here for just a second because if you just saw what I did, you'll be intrigued. Now, copepods have babies and they are called Daphnia and they grow into their adult size over time. And it looks like this Rabdicola just ate the Daphnia, which if that's what happened, I was unaware that those were on the menu for this species of flatworm, but I'll keep an eye on them and make sure that that is actually what is happening. The dwarf hair grass is propagating very nicely, and so is the Rotala rotundifolia. These two female shrimp, the one eating at the base of the hair grass and the other one on the rock there, are getting ready to lay their eggs and carry them between their pleopods for the next few weeks. But here I had to stop once again because I noticed something shocking slinking across the glass at the back of the tank. I rushed to grab it out of the tank and get it in front of a magnifying glass and it took a little bit of work to grab it in time. After a few minutes I was able to use a water bottle and transfer it with some water to a dish where I was able to use a magnifying glass on it. And what I saw 
was something different. Yes, this is the individual that I filmed a couple of episodes ago, and I did pull it out of the 30 gallon tank. It was easy to spot crawling along the back of the glass because it showed up as a little white line that was much thinner than the rhabdicola, and it shone under the light. At the time, I mistook all of these flatworms as one individual group of planaria, when in fact I probably have two or three maybe even among the three tanks that I have. First off, I do not think that it is an anchor worm because it doesn't share any of the visible traits and I didn't see it attached to any shrimp. It was just floating along on the glass. Then there are the detritus worms, which I have seen in a number of instances in both the garden and the forest. So that is a high probability. As you can see, it shares a number of the traits with the specimen that I caught, including the length and the shape, as well as how it gets around by using its hairs. If this one that I found is in fact a detritus worm, I should have nothing to worry about, although it did look a little different. In the family tree of roundworms and flatworms, right next door to the detritus worm is the capillaria roundworm, and this is a different type of nematode, and it has some distinctive features including that proboscis that you see that it uses to feed, and this one is particularly nasty, so if this is not what I've caught, I'll be very thankful. I'll have to do some more research the next time another one of these shows up. Thankfully, after all that I have done as far as research goes, it doesn't look like I've caught or seen a planaria at all among any of my three tanks since I've started keeping shrimp, which is a very good sign. Although I am bound to see one in the future, and I will keep you guys updated if something like that does show up. Anyway, I do think it is time to leave these baby shrimp, the copepods, and whatever else might be roaming around this tank, and give them some time to grow into their space over the next couple days. I also think that I've been able to come up with a name for this new 30 gallon tank. With the three large rocks and all the rotala growing in between everything against a dark background, I think I will call this tank the mountains, but that necessitates that I keep all the plants under control. That's gonna wrap it up for this week. Please remember to like and subscribe and remember to turn on notifications as you head out the door because you'll want to know when I post the next video. Either way, I post about once a week on Mondays, so keep it in your schedule. Thank you again for showing up and spending some time with me and the shrimp. After all, it is me doing this all here alone, so you're bound to meet me once again. Also, before we meet next, make sure to have yourself some sweet shrimpy dreams because the alternative is dreaming about planaria, and really, who wants to dream about those nasty things? Ugh, they're so creepy.